everybody to the Clear Tai Chi Mastermind meeting for August 20th, 2021. Uh, today's topic is why do you practice Tai Chi or Tai Chi Twin? And I wanted to make to give all of our regional organizers um, a chance to weigh in on those questions, and I will some too. And if you're interested in what we're talking about and you want to get started in Tai Chi or you want to do the Clear Tai Chi programs because of some of what we're getting into, then the what the the uh, sponsor's message today is go to Clear Tai Chi at startcleartaichi.com. Anything to add there? Uh, no, it's the, uh, the the complete curriculum, the way that he teaches it in the classes to his to his live students like me and the other the other guys in Maribel. Uh, that that program has been filmed. It's online. And it's all available at startcleartaichi.com. Uh, and you can go there directly. Cool. So uh, let me start by, I'm Richard Cleary, your resident host and all that. Uh, this is Matt Holker. He is the regional organizer for Maryville, Tennessee, outside of Knoxville. With us today is Harry Legg in Verona, New Jersey. Welcome, by the way. Welcome, Harry. Hello, thank you, Sifu. I uh, also have an instructor in Fairlawn, and I realized in last week's uh, podcast, if, if you happen to have seen it, uh, I have uh, an instructor in Camden, New Jersey, but I was thinking of my L.A. days, and I said Compton. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> Camden. So anyway, thank you. Great, great to be here. Cool. <laughs> and then uh, Philip Chan in Columbus, Georgia. Hello, all. Welcome. Mark Mashad in Michigan. I'll let him tell you where in Michigan. Hi, it's the uh, Mid Michigan covering uh, Grand Rapids and Lansing area. What part of Michigan? Uh, Midwest Michigan. Midwest Michigan covering yep. the Lansing and Grand Rapids would be okay. the large cool. metropolitan areas. Yep. Art Dawn outside of Washington, D.C. Hi, everyone. Uh, about 12 miles east of Washington, D.C. in Greenville, Maryland. Welcome. Jim Kelly in Boca Raton, Florida. Generally in Boca, yeah, between Fort Lauderdale and Palm Beach. Uh, today I'm up in beautiful Ringwood, New Jersey, not far from Harry there. <laughs> Welcome. Sheila Bella in Costa Rica. I'm going to let her tell you what parts. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. Um, so I'm in the northern pacific region of costa rica that's called guanacaste and um real close to the international airport of liberia i give classes in playa del coco liberia and playa hermosa and i also have a retreat center up in the volcano area that's uh got rainforest and and cacao trees in the volcano area dormant not been active for a long long time there are hot springs so if you consider that activity, but there's no lava, there's no lava. So <laughs> just the occasional small earthquake, no big deal. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> and Ty Talbert in Colton, California. Hello, everyone. I'm in the Inland Empire and uh, we have earthquakes, but no lava either. Um, <laughs> I teach classes in Redlands, Colton and Riverside, California. Welcome. All right, so the question we got today, so the topic here, why do you practice Tai Chi and or Tai Chi Twin? And why do you, why did you start the art? So um, why did you start the art originally? Whenever you started, what, what caused you to get started? Well, I started Tai Chi because um, in the um, initial martial arts program, or group I joined, um, it was emphasized the internal martial arts. So I had an introduction to uh, Tai Chi, Xing Yi, and Bagua. But um, the, the instructor was actually a Xing Yi specialist. So I started with that first and thinking, well, if he's a specialist in that, that would make sense to practice that. And and then through throughout the time, I would, um, in, in the following years, spent some time working on one style a little more than the others. But when I uh, became involved with push hands and in particular clear internal push hands, 
I emphasized Tai Chi because that seemed to be the best art to practice for developing skill with um, push hands. So while I, I like all the internal arts, that is the reason I now emphasize and mostly practice Tai Chi. Okay. Cool. Next. I could jump on here if uh, nobody else has got it. <laughs> uh, I started, uh, uh, well, I got injured back in, I guess, 96, 97. I did a, a lot of the more additional uh, martial arts, the external stuff. And I was involved in a, uh, an incident where we had to take somebody into custody. It was a police officer, an undercover. And wound up to be a major brawl about, I would say there were probably about 10, 10 guys involved in it. And I got up, I got beat up more. <laughs> the guys that was, white. what's that? Got up in what? I, I had gotten, uh, I guess, hit and, uh, and I had a handcuff on one hand, one of my hands, and <laughs> it was just a, a, a big melee. <laughs> And I had gotten banged up pretty bad and uh, done some damage to a shoulder and my back. So at that time, I tried to switch off to something a little bit less uh, prone to injury. And I had gotten into the, uh, the Tai Chi to recuperate. And, uh, and from there, I followed it into the, uh, the fighting, the Tai Chi fighting methods, which I find are... Uh, a lot more forgiving on both your body and the opponent's body when need be. Uh, it has a lot more uh, severity with how much damage you, you wind up uh, inflicting. So uh, the Sichuan has been great. It's been a good, uh, a good alternative to the traditional external styles, and it's, it's worked out very well. Cool. Did it, and did it help you? You said you've told me before that you used the Tai Chi to help to rehabilitate that injury, that specific injury that you got. Yeah. Yeah. It took about two years just doing the, um, just doing the forms and the general stretching and not doing a lot of internal stuff. It took me about uh, two, three years before I was, I was able to start coaching uh, an MMA club in high school down here, a local high school. So, so I was, I was able to spar again with the, you know, 17, 18 old, uh, uh, kids, uh, you know, they had come from different, uh, background from martial arts, you know, street fighting. So, so it was a good, a good to, you know, to see how much the Tai Chi had, uh, had, had done to recuperate my body. Cool. Sheila? Yeah, so um, I actually started doing Qigong to support my husband's goals because our acupuncturist had recommended Qigong for him and they wanted to form a group. So I went to make sure the group would be, you know, enough people in there and all that. So I was just sort of doing it to support him. Um, at the time I was doing gymnastics and swimming, uh, but I'm very flexible, like I'm hyper flexible. So my knee slipped out of joint and I was already in the Qigong class, but suddenly became more about like Jim, like it was me recuperating instead of just being there to support my husband. And um, at that time it was just Qigong. And I learned the, of course it was amazing results. Like I was completely convinced and, and uh, the recuperation time was much, much shorter than I would have expected it to be. Um, I was doing a little acupuncture there as well to support that injury. Um, and about six years later, uh, I started the Chuen as well. And um, that to me was a revelation. I was really glad I did it in that order because the Qigong sort of shows you the moves. And then the, the Chuen is like, you're applying it, you know? And so once you learn Chuen, all those movements in your body uh, show you how you can use energy while you move. And so that it, you can translate that into your daily life. 
Cool. Did you see anything specific that got you into the twin or is it they just started teaching it to you? Yeah, my teacher, um, he just called and said, hey, I'm going to start doing this if you want to join us. <laughs> Yeah. And it was funny. I was going through a lot of trouble at that time. My father was ill and I was traveling a lot to go support my family with my father's illness. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I've said to many people repeatedly that it kind of saved my life because I was so stressed out with that situation that it was, it was this as much for mental health, I would say, than for physical health at that time. And um, he actually gave that class to three different groups before I was able to sort of take the whole class. Cause I, I started at the end with one group and then I started in the middle with the other group and then back to the beginning uh -huh. and like that. It was a 24 move form. And so I, I learned them out of order. Um, but eventually after about a year and a half I was able to do the 24 which is much longer than it should have taken. But um, mm. I was really grateful that it existed for me at that time. It was very useful for me during that period of high stress. Yeah. Cool. There's no telling how much it prevented, <laughs> but I'm sure I came out of that whole situation in much better shape for having that resource of, uh, you know, regulating my stress and keeping my body um, moving. Cool. Harry? Uh, so the answer to why I got into Tai Chi is, is really more on how I got into martial arts in general. Um, I had always, since I was a, a late uh, teenager into my 30s, uh, going to the gym, doing that, those sorts of workouts. And uh, frequently throughout uh, that time period, I had a personal trainer. Um, my career had taken me through eight different cities around the U.S. And uh, I had moved to New York, uh, had a really nice job with Clear Channel, which uh, people may now know as iHeartMedia or iHeartRadio. And uh, every year with that company and others, it's... Happy holidays. Here's your pink slip. So there was a year when I was, along with half the staff, was a, a victim of their riffs, corporate speak for firing your butt, uh, reductions in force. Oh, my God. So anyway, I had a um, and I had just bought a house a year earlier, which they say is the radio person's curse. Buy a house, you'll lose your gig. Yes, that happened. Um, so I had uh, a personal trainer uh, in the city. And after losing the job and, and whatnot, what's the first thing you do? Well, you're going to pull the plug on the personal trainer, unfortunately. So I sat at home in uh, my studio for a good six months, um, just trying to focus on the voiceover career, which is the other thing that I do, uh, and really get things going. But then finally it's like, okay, I need to do something um, because I'm starting to get a little too sloppy. And um, I had no knowledge about martial arts at all. But I thought, hey, you know, instead of going to the gym, I'm, as I drive around here, there's a martial arts place like oh, every other corner. Um, and I did a bunch of research um, not knowing anything about it, uh, trying to find uh, a school that fit what I thought I wanted, which is kick and punch and plenty of cardio and, hey, maybe get some self-defense skills as well. Um, and uh, almost every place I went to was a, a Taekwondo school or uh, there was jujitsu, but they were very kid-based. I went to this other school that said they offered eight different martial arts. And I went, hmm, okay, so how's that? Because every other one I go to is just Kung Fu or just this or just that, and you're offering eight. And they, they had a very good line. It was, well, when you go to school, do you just take health? No, you take math and English and history. So we offer the fundamentals of all of these various arts, and one of them was Tai Chi. So that's where I began. And then it was just two to three years into training there um, and thinking I'm learning Tai Chi that I met you, Sifu Cleary, would happen to be your very first year at an event that uh, no longer exists. It was called the Tai Chi Gala up in Albany, New York. And I thought I was learning Tai Chi. They, the most basic of terms that they were throwing out, uh, okay, stand in your best Wuji posture. And, and I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> I didn't even know that. Yet I've been at this school for two to three years. And, and I met you. I pushed hands with some of your students. And my mind was blown. And uh, that really set me on the, the Tai Chi path. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Who's next? Mark. Mark. <clears throat> <clears> 
<clears throat> yeah, you know, I've even when I was young, I had a fascination with the martial arts, everything about it. Just and the reason why is because the first community class I was in, they had a community, a karate course come in, like a community education program. And I was just baffled because I couldn't even coordinate my two hands. Like a very basic thing, like, like, you know, a low block where you block with one and you chamber at the hip. I couldn't do that. I was like wired badly. Something as simple as like a corkscrew punch where you chamber the other hand at the hip, palm up. It wouldn't work. I would be palmed down or I would be, it wouldn't move back. It was like a complete dysfunction. And so it really, uh, it's probably because I was so bad at it. I, I became like super kind of almost obsessed a little bit with it. And when I hit, I come from a small town. And so when I went to college, it was a, a big university and uh, they had a number of clubs there, martial arts clubs. And I decided I was going to try everything. I was going to try to absorb as much as I could. Uh, but before I did that, I went to, uh, it was, this is back before the internet. I went to this thing called a library. <laughs> I did a little research first. They had a pretty good, um, they maybe had 40 books on martial arts in the library at the campus. So I started doing some research before I began because I wanted to try to get off on the right foot with the best information possible. And one of the things that jumped out at me when I did that research is that, um, and I, I really didn't get it. I didn't understand when they describe it because you can't describe it in a book well, Tai Chi, you can't describe it well. But, but when, what they would do is they would describe the results and I could understand that. And so when they talked about the results, some things stood out to me in, you know, in opposition to external martial arts, whether they're Chinese or Japanese or whatever. And what it was, was um, the, the practitioners of external martial arts will hit about 40, where they're continuing maybe to increase in skill and ability. And then at about 40, they start to level off. And then they start to uh, uh, decrease in ability. And if they stop training, hold on a second. I, I got construction outside. I got to move to a different room here. They're tearing my road up. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what happens is the external martial artists, when they hit their 40s, they start to level out. And if they take a break at all, they start to get this thing called energy dispersion is what they called it, which they start to basically degrade or age faster than a normal person. Um, whereas with an internal martial artist, the Tai Chi specifically, I remember, they talked about how they would continue to get better. So the beginning of the curve was slower. Maybe the, the you know, developing the skill at first would be slower, but what it would do is it would just keep building and growing well into their 70s, they could do pretty cool stuff. And their health was was very good. And when I looked into the, uh, there's like, uh, oh, like I would call them apocryphal stories. You see them woven into Kung Fu movies, you know, where they run on walls yeah. or jump over buildings, right? And those are exaggerations. But when I researched out those stories, they all led to internal martial arts, not external martial arts. And the, uh, and so, so I went looking for that first. I went looking for Tai Chi. And uh, there was a Tai Chi club, but I could tell they didn't know what they were doing. I could look at them and know just by looking at their health. And, uh, and so I, I really was looking ever since I was 18 for Tai Chi. I've tried four or five times. And, uh, the what happened was in the end is I suffered a couple of pretty bad injuries. I had to take some time off and I got that energy dispersion where all of a sudden everything tightens up and you can't move. It's almost like quick drying cement. The joints stiffen up and the muscles shrink and tighten. The tendons tighten and uh, everything hurts. And so I decided, you know, I'm just going to go look. And so I started in my hometown. And I was going to spiral outwards, even if it took the whole earth. I was going to spiral outwards till I found it, if it existed. And so I lucked out. I had done research first on the internet. 
And uh, I found one of your students in Ann Arbor and I tried that first. And so I lucked out, you were having a workshop there the next weekend. And that's when I had the experience. And I, I, to be honest with you, I could just look at you and I knew that it was the right place because I could look at your health. I could look at your health, look at how you walked and how you moved before you actually even did a Tai Chi, any Tai Chi concept. I, I was looking at that first. So it's in the end, I mean, it was fascination to begin with, but in the end, it's, it's really survival that brings me here that, to get, you know, get my health back, you know? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mark, do you have the longest house in the world? Or are you like walking in circles? <laughs> I'm walking I'm in circles. I'm, I, I, I'm a pacer. <laughs> I, it drives my wife crazy. She's like, sit down, stop it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> who's next? Cool. Uh, yeah, who's next? Uh, yes, um, I had studied martial arts most of my life, and I'd been involved in another martial art, and I took my fifth degree black belt test, and the instructor told me that I should go and study a different martial art, and I was kind of taken aback about it, by that, but I found out it was a traditional thing that he did, that he picked a none of the martial art for you to go and study. And the two that he recommended to me were Bagua and Tai Chi. And Mark's story about trying to find legitimate Tai Chi is very important because my first involvement with Tai Chi was a group doing the 24 in the park who really did not have any idea of what they were doing. Then I found an instructor who knew the 24 very well and understood the applications and everything, but I realized that he was teaching me Hangar after taking a seminar and then going back to him and asking him basic terms like Wuji, what, what are they talking about, Wuji stand? Then I finally found someone who was legitimate and then I was exposed to you at a seminar and I'm like, oh, okay, this is a whole nother level. And I'm so very happy that I found it. And it's really funny now because I look at the people at the other style that I used to study and realize that they will never get to that level of the master unless they study a soft style, an internal style. Yeah, because there's too many skills in there that require it for yes. the other art you were doing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, the other art is a complete art. It's just that at the high levels, you have to get into the internal quite a bit in that particular martial art. And if they don't have access to it, then they're gonna have a hard time getting much higher than about fifth degree. Mm -hmm. I felt like you're saying, yeah. Yes. Cool. Uh, Phil? Still, you're still on mute. So my story is totally different than any of yours. <laughs> so the reason I started Tai Chi, and it was 1968. I was, uh, had just graduated from high school. I was about to start college. Cheng Man Cheng had been in New York for a period of time, and they had a school in on Canal Street. And my father says, "We're," he told my mother and me, "We're going to a Tai Chi class." And uh, in Chinese families, when your father says that, you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it started. <laughs> And then did you go, did you actually go to Chen Man Ching's class? Oh, we went, I think we went to three classes. And it was, um, Chen Man Ching has a very good reputation among many, 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 many Tai Chi people. Uh, he speaks of, um, he doesn't speak Mandarin or Cantonese, if I remember correctly. I think he speaks Fukunese. So my father couldn't understand anything he was saying. In addition, he didn't teach the class very much. He was sort of in a back room, and one of his students was doing most of the teaching. Okay. 
if I remember correctly, it was just mostly follow me, but I'm not sure. But what I do remember is learning very, very little in, in some place between one and four classes. And then um, I'm not sure how that all evolved, but my father decided we weren't going back to Chinatown to do those classes. But uh, there was a group of, so this was 68. You had a bunch of people that were like World War II veterans and and some of them had gotten homes through the VA loans. Yeah. So one of, one of the men had a home in Levittown uh, and he invited a bunch of his middle-aged Chinese male cronies to join in a Tai Chi class and they got uh, William C.C. C. Chen to uh, drive out to Levittown and he gave classes and so that's how he gave classes and I think I learned either part maybe at least the first half of the uh, Chen Men Ching form mm -hmm. I don't remember if I learned the first half or I learned the whole thing from him uh, but that's that's how that evolved. And then uh, that went through the summer. And then I went away to college and I got into other things. But uh, that was my illustrious start with Tai Chi was uh, when your dad tells you to do something, you do it. <laughs> so, so that was how you started. And then at some point you came back into Tai Chi again. What year was that? Um, oh, about. right. Let's see. I, I was doing my residency and i don't know if you know about robert smith of course okay yeah. Yeah. so i had the good fortune of of taking many lessons with robert smith and Not and i that. also met don drager yeah and took some classes with don drager in hawaii for tai chi or for other stuff no he was teaching jodo yeah yeah the four foreign staff Foreign staff, yeah, right. Uh, so that's a, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, Robert Smith was teaching in Bethesda, Maryland, and he had a studio that he taught during the week, and then he had free classes. I think on either Saturday or Sunday morning, mm -hmm. uh, at the I think it was at the YMCA in the parking lot, mm -hmm. and then after that you would go to the they would we'd all go out to breakfast or brunch. Oh, what got you to take Tai Chi with Robert Smith? What made you decide, hey, I want to do this? Was it, I know you said you're in residency. So as a wild guess, that tends to be pretty stressful. Yes. So it was highly stressful. I had a, a very strained relationship with the teaching director. And I ended up in, I ended up doing some yoga. And then I don't know if the Tai Chi came out of the stress reduction or is just I wanted to do something that was somewhat related to martial arts. Sure. I don't remember what the exact thing was, but it was just and it may have been just I felt like, you know, I had been introduced to this the system and I wanted to know more about. It. I don't remember the thing, but it was a it was a it was a very supportive kind of environment. Mm -hmm. um, so. Now, was Robert Smith at that time teaching the Chen Man Ching form or something else? No, he was teaching the Chen Man Ching form. So he taught he taught Bagua, Xing Yi, and, and Push Hands. Mm -hmm. uh, but I only did the Tai Chi with him. And he was teaching the Chen Man Ching form. I don't know that he did any other Tai Chi forms, uh, but I never asked him. Uh, but as far as I know, Chen Man Ching was his major Tai Chi instructor, as far as I know. Okay, cool. Excellent. You know, so for me, the uh, what got me started was I was doing kung fu with. Did I did I leave out any of you before I go on there? Why you? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, <clears throat> so I got started in tai chi because of a fight I got into in fifth grade. Um, I had already been doing karate, uh, Shotokan karate, really since I was in kindergarten. Um, and had been kind of training that up, but I really wasn't able, even in the classes, I really wasn't able to make the karate work 
so much the way that it was kind of supposed to work. But by sparring enough, I got to a point where I could sort of read people's intentions. I could kind of tell what they were kind of ready to bring and what, what they might, if they took like one more step, what would change about that. And I got pretty good at kind of eyeballing, um, you know, distances and things that would help me to defend myself, not necessarily doing the hard, you know, block punch stuff from the karate, but, um, but using other skill sets. And when I was in fifth grade, um, I had played around with that concept a little bit here and there dealing with other, you know, playground type stuff. Um, but one day in class, uh, a kid who had some problem with me, I don't even remember what started to, to try, try to start a fight, um, in front of the teacher, the teacher was, was present for that. And in my school, if you were caught fighting, both of you went to the principal's office, didn't matter who started it, didn't matter any of the other circumstances. You both went to the principal's office. You're probably both going to get detention. Um, and I knew that. And at the same time, it was like, well, what do I do? Do I just stand here and get punched in the face instead? Um, and so, you know, I didn't do that. What I did instead was I kept my distance from him carefully. And when I saw him go to bring a punch, I moved in and put my hand on it. And then when he, when he brought his punch, I could feel the pressure of it and the angle of it well enough that I could kind of get out of the way. And that's about all I did was just stay out of his way until eventually he got so overcommitted that I kind of helped him to the floor and backed away and, and got out of there. Well, my teacher saw the whole thing. He sent that boy to the principal's office and he pulled me aside and he said, where did you get your Tai Chi? Who taught you Tai Chi? And I, said, I don't know Tai Chi. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I do karate. I've been doing karate for a number of years now, but I, that wasn't karate. I can't make the karate work. That's just something I've kind of figured out over the years. And he said, well, that's impressive. And that is a kind of a low level of the way Tai Chi fights, but that's very much the way Tai Chi thinks about fighting and the kind of the strategy that Tai Chi uses. You should think about doing Tai Chi. And it turned out that he was, uh, he was doing Tai Chi. He was a Tai Chi student of T.T. Liang, who was in the area at the time. Um, and of course, I didn't know that back then. I didn't know who T.T. Liang was or any of that. I only found out later. But my fifth grade teacher and I spent the, net, the re bulk of the rest of the year talking off and on about martial arts and about Tai Chi and about his experiences with it and things that the other people in his school were able to do, including like rooting skill, which really like blew my mind to hear about that. Um, and some of the other kind of skill sets from Tai Chi, from the real authentic Tai Chi that was being done, um, it was very impressive to hear. And so I spent, I didn't go out looking for it right away. I stayed in karate, uh, but I did talk to my karate instructors about it. And much to my surprise, what I found out was that they said that if you go far enough in the Shotokan at like the highest, highest levels of the, you know, the black belt dons in, in that art, that it gets very, very soft and that the focus is on this kind of internal power. And what they said, and I don't know that I necessarily agree with this and I don't think Sifu would, but what they said and what I've heard a number of times from, from Shotokan people is at the highest levels of Shotokan, if you had a Shotokan master and like a Tai Chi master, and they were sparring it, an outside observer who was like not trained in either of those disciplines wouldn't necessarily be able to tell the difference they wouldn't know that like one guy was trained in a different art than the other guy because they would look so similar and i thought that was interesting um somewhere along the way the politics of the of the kind of local school got in the way of my training um, for the Shotokan. And so I decided to go look for other martial arts and I, you know, Tai Chi was right at the top of my list. I was 15 years old when that happened. And I was, uh, almost 35 when I finally found Sifu Clear. I was beginning to think that I wasn't going to find it because like everybody else in the call or almost everybody has expressed, um, with like the exception of Phil, I guess, <laughs> um, the, uh, the Tai Chi that I was able to find early on, was not authentic Tai Chi. It was all just, you know, do the form for 20 years and magically Harry Potter's owl makes you healthy or what, however that's supposed to work. And the, it was, you know, it was not, um, it was not the authentic Tai Chi that I had heard about 
from my teacher and that I knew was out there somewhere. Uh, but, you know, by that time, T.T. Liang was long gone from Minnesota and, uh, and, I, and I just had nowhere else to turn. And so I looked for quite a while and I looked pretty far and wide and I was really beginning to think that I was never going to find it. And, uh, and then finally, um, I met C for Clear and I was, you know, fortunate enough to be able to move down here and train with him for the last six years. And it's been, it's been a blessing. That's how I got started. Cool. <laughs> a bully picked a fight. The uh, so I studied kung fu for actually. Well, basically, I started. I I was with a kung fu school that was under Dr. Fred Wu, and I was with one of the senior students. And then after two years, I was with one of the other senior students. And for the first one, mostly it was kung fu stuff, and then he would have us do a little bit of tai chi every once in a while, but didn't think much of it. Yeah, just did what he told us. And then um, my one of my grandparents died, and six months later, the other grandparent died. And I was 17, and I realized that um, uh, my grandparents, none of them saw the age of 60, and that my, grand, my mom's parents had both been dead earlier than that, and they actually died before the age of 50 due to health reasons. And... So I was fortunately blessed, I guess you'd call it blessed, with a higher, higher, a fairly high IQ. And one of the things that comes with that came with that for me was I could kind of look down the road and go, you know, not being able to live to the age of 50 means dying pretty young uh, when you when you probably didn't have to. And so I and I also had a and the the big triggering. So there was that was sort of as a helpful thing, knowing that Tai Chi was supposed to help for living longer and, and being healthier and all that in specific kinds of ways. Not that the Kung Fu wouldn't do some of that, too, because it does. The, uh, but the other one was my mom looked at my hand and my fingers. When you look at them close, they, most of them look like they've been broken. They're kind of twisty and this kind of a thing. And she was like, oh, you've got the family unhearted form of arthritis. Do they hurt yet? And she asked me that when I was about 16. And I was like, you know, and my fingers are out and I pull my fingers back and go, what do you mean do my fingers hurt yet? And she was, and she, no, my mom had me when she was 16. And so when I'm 16 and doing that, she's only 32. And what she's saying to me is, well, about 10 years ago, my fingers really started, they're like that and they started hurting. And I knew it's, that meant she's like six years older than I was then. She's saying my fingers would all be, you know, having a bunch of pain and stuff. And I was like, and so I had heard that Tai Chi was good for arthritis. So after she did that, I went back and asked my instructor, who at that time was Tyrone, hey, um, I'm, I've heard that Tai Chi is really good for arthritis. And is that true? And he said, yes. And so I got a lot more interested and started doing the form and all that. And at some point, still doing the other Kung Fu more often, the... Uh, uh, I basically was sparring with a guy where I was doing Kung Fu. I thought he was doing Kung Fu. And he tapped me three times and was standing behind me. And I thought he was doing some kind of crazy style of Kung Fu that I hadn't heard of before. And I asked him and he said, I'm doing Tai Chi. And I was like, yeah, yeah. What other styles of Kung Fu do you have? And he said, I don't do any other ones. I'm only a Tai Chi student. And he was a Tai Chi student under Dr. Wu and with Tyrone. And, I, and once I was convinced of that, I was like, okay, I got to know how you're doing that with Tai Chi. And so uh, the surprising combat effectiveness of it really intrigued me and the, and the strangeness of it. And the cool factor of him tapping me the three times and disappearing out from in front of me and standing behind me. And I didn't, I, I was doing this and didn't touch him. And the, uh, and I told you about the healing and health parts and all that. So anyways, but the, all of that put together, then I got seriously interested in the Tai Chi and then really really seriously studied it from that point forward that started really the first part of that started about 1980 81 and i had a little bit of qigong and some stuff in 1979 but but i got hooked on it there somewhere around 83 84 somewhere in there is where i was like i'm going to be doing this the rest of my life so anyways you know what hits me in this story is just how bizarrely lucky we all kind of are 
that, that any number of these little circumstances could have gone a different way and uh, the training wouldn't be there and the, and, you know, the, the information that we all have access to, uh, you know, we wouldn't have it through C for Clear. And, and if we didn't have it through him, we probably wouldn't have it through anyone else. Um, it's just, it's kind of amazing to, I mean, right down to the, to the, you know, inherited arthritis that, you know, if you, if it hadn't been for that and your mom spotting that at 15, scared me. Right. <laughs> Who knows? Pain. <laughs> you know what they say when the student's ready? The teacher will appear. Correct. Yeah. And now a word from our sponsor. What is internal power? Most people only understand external exerting power, which is another way of saying tense muscle strength. Bigger, more tense muscles equal more power. That's external power. Internal power comes from pretty much anything except tensing your muscles. There are many sources of internal power and tapping into them is more of a mind skill than anything else. This is where the phrase mind over matter comes from. My name is Richard Clear and internal power is what I do. Students come to me for the mind over muscle secrets of internal power that are hard to find anywhere else. Over the past 40 years, I figured out how to get students on the fast track to effortless power. I created a one-of-a-kind online program that is getting such amazing results for my students that I put a money-back guarantee on it. Find out more at internalpowerkeys.com. That's internalpowerkeys.com. Thank you. Well, speaking of which, um, I mentioned, you know, I feel very lucky to be able to be here in person and to, you know, to have been in the position where I was able to move down here when the opportunity came up. But I know not everybody is in that position. And the good news is that you don't have to be. All of the material that we cover in all of the classes with Sifu Clear is available online at startcleartaichi.com. And it's taught the same way that he teaches us, including all of the like troubleshooting and all the, all the errors that he catches the students doing and commonly doing. He, uh, he helps walk us through that and you get to benefit from that and you get to see that online. Um, I always say the one thing better than learning from your own mistakes is learning from other people's mistakes. And so you have the opportunity to do that. Um, and so uh, startcleartaichi.com will get you into the training that we're all talking about. Yep, cool, excellent. Um... What caused you to continue to study the art longer term? What got you hooked on it? Can I weigh in on this first? Because I think I might have to run for the um, guy, the delivery guy here. Okay. Um, the uh, so uh, I'm sorry. Say the, say the what question kind of, again. What, what do we have delivered? The poor one. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What caused you to continue to study the art longer term? What got you hooked on Tai Chi oh. for me? You know, Tai Chi for me. <laughs> Well, once I knew uh, what the what the art really had, I wanted that. Like I really did want it. And one and once I once I read enough and I found enough information out there to know that there were people out there who were at least claiming to have these skills, and that there were other people out there who were verifying that, like, yeah, that guy's got the skill. Um, I really wanted it, and the only trouble I had was tracking down a good source of it. And, uh, and so when I found Sifu Clear originally, I found him by the videos and I trained by the videos for the first three years before I moved here. Um, and I actually still do train from the videos today. I still go home and watch some of them because, you know, I don't, I don't want to bug him all the time with questions that he's already answered, but, um, but, uh, um, the uh, but once I found that and and I realized that Sifu Clear was at least saying the right things and that the training that he was telling us all to do when I did it, I was getting the results that he said you would get. And the more I saw that, the more I had to know, like, does, is, is this for real or is this like another trick? Is this like a is this some is this a guy who's you know putting across good things on video, but when I get there in person, he's not going to have anything. Really, the only question in my mind was, uh, you know, how much better does Sifu Clear look on video than he is in person? It never occurred to me until I got here in the same room with him that he's actually much more impressive in person because the video, 
it just it just doesn't do it justice. You can't tell quite what the other person in the video with Sifu what what they have and what they don't have. You can't tell how power, how powerful they are because he ends up making everybody look like a rag doll at some point. And so um, and, and so you know you just you just don't know what exactly he has to struggle with and deal with in order to get those kinds of results until you're there in the room with him and you're really kind of testing him with whatever you've got and you feel what he's doing to you. And then once I, I mean, once I experienced that for myself and there were a couple of odd and end moments in the first workshop that I came to here, uh, it was, uh, it was just a no brainer. I literally, I, I mean, I broke the lease on my apartment. I quit my job. Like I did, I did have to make sacrifices to move here. But I had been looking for the art for 20 years at that point for the real art. And I'd been looking for it for a long time. And so then when I finally found it and I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that like, yeah, it's there. It is there to be had. You know, I had to move here. I had to get down. Next. Okay. <laughs> Next. What caused you to continue to study the art longer term? What got you hooked on it? What made you go, man, this is for me for the rest of my life or whatever, if you hit that, which I'm sorry, fairly certain most of you have, maybe all of you, but anyways. All right. well, what, what helped me a lot um, after your um, initial push hands workshop was um, that I realized there was the, the power to Tai Chi that you could, you could present that and give us guidance towards working towards it and that there was power for martial purposes and, and also healing purposes. And I thought one thing that impressed me was that, um, well, I, you know, I might get in a fight sometime or have to defend myself or at least have the confidence to, to, to back away from it and uh, avoid it. But certainly there, there's going to be health issues of um, maybe greater or lesser import with me or other people that with, with, with the, your training, um, I'll be able to, to work with and improve a lot, if not completely heal. And that gave me a, a lot of impetus to want to, you know, study with you and, and practice you, your, your teachings. Um, so it was, you know, the, the, the martial aspects and, and the healing aspects um, both together with, with the displays of the real energy that um, keep me wanting to work with it. Cool. Thank you. Next. Uh, I'll jump in, okay. <laughs> um, it's a really long list, but um, uh, quickly, the school that I was going to prior to and overlapping with studying with you, um, Unfortunately, as is commonly the case, the Tai Chi was empty. It was choreography. And uh, the other arts they were teaching me, well, were sort of kind of the same thing. I did get through Black Belt in that system for, you know, what that's worth. But I'm like, oh, my God. Like, what was important to them was, okay, do you know kata number 18? Do you have kata number 21? And I'm going, oh, for goodness sakes, really? <sighs> so training with you. And getting body quality and beginning to get real internal skill and things that, like, you really want that really actually matter uh, is what did it uh, primarily. Being able to use it in your life is what yeah, I'm hearing. It is, exactly. that, it, that it wasn't, you know, the form, it's not like you can be in the kitchen doing something and be like, hold on, will I break out this form? Blah, 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 blah. But hey, this real relaxed quality, this real, and some of these other internal principles that you can do whatever you're doing. Yes. And, and, you know, and I suppose you have a, a follow-up question about, you know, why are we doing Tai Chi? And so I have a much longer answer, but uh, the healing abilities and whatnot are something I had no clue of. And so once I got wind of that, holy cow, that's uh, a whole nother thing as well. Yep. Yeah, so, so say that part again about the follow-up question. 
Well, uh, you you uh, you know, prior to us beginning, you said you know the topic will be why do you do Tai Chi, and mm-hmm. you haven't exactly asked that specific question. Uh, I've sat here and wrote out a list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, where do I even begin with why do I do Tai Chi? So you know, I don't know if uh, you want all those reasons now or or whatnot. But what got me hooked on it was. Um, the internal skill, the healing abilities that I had no idea existed beyond what people always say. They always say, well, Tai Chi is good for your health. Sure. And sure, getting up off the couch and moving, and yes, of course that's good. But it like goes way, 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 way further than that. And so many people don't know or understand that. So, yeah. so we'll be doing what we're doing this week, and then we'll be doing it next week. And if we get towards the end there, where you can tell us towards the end, and, you, and it's and you've got something on your list that you hadn't hit, make sure to get that in there, so that way people get that the benefit of that from you. So, cool. Sure. Thank you. Oh yeah. Thanks. Um, Sheila. Yeah. So, um, as a continuation of the of what I was mentioning previously with the high stress situation and the traveling and all that, that I was going through, um, I became very convinced that Tai Chi was something that I needed to do, you know, every day and for the rest of my life. Um, At some point, my teacher had said, uh, well, part of his method was to have each person in the class lead the rest of the class, um, which was his way of making sure that you were really doing, you know, (laughs) not just following, but really doing. And so he at some point said, uh, you know, you should be a teacher now. And it kind of surprised me because I hadn't really thought of doing that, you know, Um, but with his encouragement and having him place some of his students below me, et cetera, um, I got to a point where I said, you know, this is exciting and and something that I think I do want to continue with, but I didn't really feel like I was all that prepared to be in that position. So that's when I started looking for more information. That's when I found you. And so I could say, you know, I had the feeling that I want to continue, but um, what really got me hooked was seeing like what Harry's referring to, not just further, but deeper and and wider and higher. And I mean, it's just this bottomless uh, discovery. And um, I had already been doing, um, as Matt referred to the online course, um, probably a year and a half by the time I made it to a workshop. And the one that I chose to, to go to first was the healing workshop. And that was just, I mean, I don't think you can go through that workshop and not want to continue. You, it's just, it's like this whole other dimension to what a human can do on this planet. So <laughs> um, thrilled, thrilled, thrilled every single day. And it's, I mean, I don't even consider like, is this a decision to continue or not? I mean, it's just, it's just part of my life now and it's thrilling and I love it. Love it. Love it. Cool. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Mark. Uh, By the way, all their answers are good. Those would have been all, that was what all be on my list. It's like, like Harry said, it's like 50 things long. It's hard to pick something. But if I was to pick probably one kind of thing that would cover most things for me, it would be that the Tai Chi is kind of like, a, it's such a, like all is one. It's like an integrative, um, over, it's, it's not like just martial arts. It's not just healing. It's kind of like this overall thing of, uh, Oh, see, I'm not, I'm not explaining it well. It's, uh, you know, you look at Tai Chi, uh, there's, there's a philosophy almost that you pick up without talking about philosophy. Just by doing the thing, you absorb the philosophy of kind of how to look at things. The interacting with people, instead of having an honor code or a, you know, a lot of schools will have a dojo kun, right? Uh, like a code of morality, right? In Tai Chi, you do your push hands and you absorb how you interact with people properly or appropriately. How you how you deal with people. Yeah. There's uh there just seems to be like an integrated uh we we have a tendency, I guess. I guess what I'm getting at. I guess it's better to talk about what it isn't. There's a tendency for us to compartmentalize 
or break things down into many. And it's almost like looking at a tree and missing the forest, kind of. I'm not sure I'm explaining this well. Whereas Tai Chi, you get a sense of the flow of things and where they're going and how they're occurring. You see like you see like the end result sort of. Um, I'm kind of rambling a little bit. Okay. I'm trying, it's hard to explain, but like, uh, like for example, uh, if you look at just martial arts, um, most martial arts are, are fixated on technique, mm -hmm. a punch, a kick, a throw, a lock, whatever. Uh, if they're a little more, a little more advanced, they maybe get into tactics or they might have an overall strategy for, you know, applying those tactics to use those techniques. That it's like a, it's, if you look at a tree, uh, I see the techniques is like leaves, and then the branches would be like tactics. And then if you have an overall strategy, a style forms, whether it's karate or jujitsu or whatever, maybe it's a larger branch or maybe it starts getting into the trunk, but it's not the roots of the tree. Whereas Tai Chi is the roots of the tree. If you know Tai Chi, I believe that you can apply it to other things. Like, for example, I could apply it to a punch or a lock. Someone sure. could show me a lock, like a jujitsu person could show me a lock. And in a very short time, I think you'd be able to apply it very effectively. Whereas if you show a, if a jujitsu person was to watch, observe a Tai Chi person, they wouldn't necessarily be able to pick up what you were doing if you didn't tell them. Right. I'm, I'm just kind of trying to ramble it out. Is that kind of it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it really is what, what made, what got you hooked? What made you go, man, this is for me. Yeah. And what I'm hearing you say is you just kind of like the depth of it and the, and the scope of it and that kind of thing. And you find it interesting and intriguing and that kind of thing. I'm kind of here. That's, that's the gist of what I'm taking from what you're saying. Yeah. Intellectually stimulating with, with, with the, with the ability for continuous growth, no dead end, no, you know, stagnation. There would always be a way to expand and, uh, and get more depth in anything that you applied this to. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Let's see here. Ty. Yeah. Um, tai Chi that is not blind is life. Life that is not blind is Tai Chi. And yeah. I find that Tai Chi embellishes every aspect of my life. So I can never leave it. Yeah. Uh, other than Phil, has everybody else weighed in now? Anybody else that hadn't weighed in? I don't know if Phil's there or not. We even have to come back to him. The... Uh, for me, it's the more that it's the more that I learned and the more that I saw, and especially like the 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 relief from the arthritis that I got. The um, when the dude tapped me the three times and was standing behind me and did it slow, and I wasn't able to put a hand on him. And um, the uh, for me, it was that the more I learned, the more I realized that there is to learn. The art is really deep and vast, and like you're like you like you were saying, Mark, it really has this. Um, overarching thing to it where uh a it gets deeper and deeper uh b it works off of principles and concepts where most of the stuff in the art can actually be done better and better and better and better and it's a skill set that you build and develop and that it keeps increasing and as you get to new levels of it you begin to get understandings where um there's a there's a self-discovery thing going on along with whatever it is that you're taught um, and, and basically the, the art is very deep and vast. Phil, um, your question to you, what caused you to continue to study the art longer term? What got you hooked on it? <laughs> so this, this is also a story that's different than most other people. So I, what I'll do is I, I'll tell you the transition before clear Tai Chi. Because there was my, it was my life in Tai Chi, uh, beginning with Cheng Man Cheng, and then there was a life of Tai Chi after I retired, 
And then clear Tai Chi is a whole nother episode. So I'll, let me just talk about the um, transition, why I stayed in, why I got back into Tai Chi. Um, and this is before clear Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. So um, after, when I was in college, I didn't do Tai Chi. I did Shotokan. I did Wei Chi Ru for a year and then did Shotokan for two years. And then I uh, graduated from college and I went to medical school and I didn't have time for anything. So everything, <laughs> just surviving was all I could, the best I could do. And then I went to the army and I did little bits of pieces of training. And then when I was in in uh, Washington, D.C., I trained in with Tai Chi with uh, Robert Smith. And then when I was in Hawaii, I did a little bit of Jodo. I did Jodo for a year. Um, but it was just this off and on thing of picking up what was available. Uh, and then I would go long periods of time where I wouldn't do anything. And then in 1990, I, um, oh, and also I had an injury in 1982 where I had a torn a meniscus. Mm. And what I found is when I tore a meniscus, I really couldn't, it really was a problem doing Tai Chi. Mm. Yeah. So that was a Vincent Center for a while. And then I, I got the um, meniscus repaired in 1990, but then shortly thereafter, I found I had really significant arthritis in my right hip. Yeah, because you've been so that was that, for that meniscus tear for so many years. Possibly, yeah, that's that's only possible because it was. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I retired in '98. And I couldn't do the things I would normally want to do. I couldn't run. I couldn't play tennis. Uh, dancing was very, very limited. And I wanted to do something that I would use my body and that would be interesting. And then uh, by dumb luck, as in many things, the apartment complex offered free Tai Chi instruction. So I started taking with one of the residents was teaching Tai Chi. So I went on to do that. And he um, brought me up to where I was, he certified me to teach form, Tai Chi for Health, uh, the 24 form set and the Yang Long form. Okay. Um, in any case, so I, I got back into Tai Chi because it was, I, I, there was so it was about the only thing I could do. And I had to sit out, you know, when and during classes, a lot of times I'd had to sit out for part of it. Um, and then in 1990, when I was in Germany, I got trained in Reiki and I got very interested in internal energy. And I could, I could deliver internal energy quite well. I could teach it effectively. I could feel it when I was giving Reiki to other people, but I didn't feel much when people were giving it to me. And then when I was practicing uh, Tai Chi under uh, Ron Chively, who was my instructor here in Columbus, one day I suddenly could feel energy for the first time. So I didn't feel Reiki, I didn't feel energy receiving Reiki. I was decent doing the form, but I didn't feel energy doing Tai Chi. And then suddenly when I was working with Ron, now I could feel the energy doing Tai Chi. And I said, oh, so if I can teach other people to feel internal energy, I can get them interested in learning Tai Chi. And then maybe I can get them interested in taking Reiki classes. <laughs> So that seemed like kind of a no brainer. <laughs> so, so anyway, my instructor was supposed to, there was an instructor at the local college and uh, he decided to move to Florida, I think to be close to his parents. And Ron was um, supposed to take over his classes, but 
Ron had kind of a quirky personality and he got the people mad at the college. And then so I stepped in and says, oh, could I teach? I had gotten certified, so I got to teach at the college. And so this was just a good opportunity. It was a chance to work with energy. Uh, it was a chance to meet a lot of different people. Uh, and um, it was, I had retired early. So to be able to get some income was really very rewarding. It was never a lot of money, but it was just earned income. It was just something that was gratifying. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I found that for Tai Chi for Health, the, for people that were over 65, they generally took it for improving their balance. And for people that were still working, they generally took it for stress reduction. And so those were the things I emphasized. And I did that for many years. And then, um, yeah, so that's that's why I continued. And then Clear Tai Chi is a whole nother episode, and that didn't start until 2015. So I'll I'll let someone else take over from here. Well, so the other question is, which one of those really got you, which out of all the different things, what would you say is the one that got you hooked on Tai Chi and caused you to study the art? Like I'm, I'm doing this from now on, which was the thing that really kind of made you go, this is for me. I think the whole energy thing. Yeah. I, I just got very interested in energy and, and, I, and then, uh, yeah. So the the being able to feel the energy, uh, enjoying that, of mm -hmm. uh, having it translate to both Tai Chi and also to healing and Reiki. Yeah. Um, it was just all together. And then one of the things that really got me interested in clear Tai Chi was uh, I could feel the energy, but I couldn't translate it into a punch or a palm strike that the other person could feel it. Yeah. So that was a big part of what caused me to to continue on and and want to explore clear tai chi was was that aspect that I didn't have with my other. Yeah, I got you. So the combination of feeling the energy, being able to work with the energy for the healing and then the ability to transfer that energy into Marshall as well. Yeah, yeah. It's all, yeah, it all works very well for me, yeah. That's our motto, to feel the energy. <laughs> <laughs> so, very good. Cool. Um, like I told you guys, for me, it was the more I learned, the more I realized that there is to learn and the art's really deep and vast and that, that there's this, this, there's this, what you learn in the education. And then there's this discovery and this continuing expansion that for every time you add more skill, you realize there's that much more to do. And then you add that and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I haven't found an end to that. And the teachers that I talk to, uh, that are 20 years plus my senior say the same thing that are the that are the real uh, lineage holders and all that kind of stuff they all say the same thing that it just keeps getting better it doesn't that, it, that doesn't stop um, in China they refer to special functions like what we typically in the west would call psychic skills and my teachers had them the ones the ones that I've learned from that are no longer physically with us you know, they've crossed over. And then the ones that I still have that are alive now, Uncle Bill in particular, have them. Um, I got them. This includes things we normally think of as psychic skills, but also healing abilities for yourself and others. Um, the, uh, for me, the real art of Tai Chi Chuen develops and enhances your mind, your body, and your spirit, both separately and together. Uh, some of it comes from proper practice, but there is a lot of specific training for most of it. I wanted to know how far the rabbit hole goes, and it goes very deep and far, and I haven't seen anything that looks like the end of it yet. Um, and so that's, and so that for me was very mentally, spiritually stimulating and physically in certain ways, stimulating and continues to be so. And um, at some point, especially with the internal push hands and what we do with that for learning, for getting better sensitivity, 
or getting higher speeds of operations and, and the amount of operations that you can perform in a short period of time, how much you can pick up and the ability to manipulate that energy in different ways, both for healing yourself, for operating within other people, both for healing and for martial. I just, um, I find it exceptionally intellectually stimulating and rewarding. And so that, that, um, that really, um, is what got me pretty hooked on it in that way uh, originally too and by originally i mean after after i had seen the martial law part of it uh, enough to really go there was something pretty impressive about it and having some of the healing stuff and abilities taught and learned and practiced um and that kind of a thing and it just um it made it so that it's probably like i've been asked for many 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 years back into the 1980s well okay you've got like four or five martial arts if you had to give all of them up but one which one would you keep and tai chi was the answer that that's the one i would keep and partially because if you if you've got tai chi everything that's pretty much worth having about the rest i found through proper knowledge and practice and that kind of thing you could find it uh, versus you can have other stuff and still not really find the tai chi or even if you lucked into it you're lucky you're getting you know a little bit um and all that. Now with that, with our Tai Chi, it is the idea that we're not just doing the form again and again. It, it is that you're working those skill sets and what those are. So word from our sponsor, if you're interested in this kind of thing and you want to, you want to check out the clear Tai Chi, do it at startcleartaichi.com. That's startcleartaichi.com. Cool. Um, is there anything that any of you guys want to add for what we've been talking about today because i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of with anything else you want to add of course um i'm gonna probably end it right there and then we'll pick that up next time right where we're whoops, right where we're leaving off um but is there anything that occurred to you like that and and uh harry you sounded like you might have had other ones there that might be worth some of what might be worth bringing up specifically but other ones you may have other things to go with that and then um, we'll get to it next time so yeah yeah thank you next time i guess no no go ahead oh now well, well okay well so why am i doing tai chi it's fun especially push hands it's a ton of fun um what everyone else has touched on including yourself sifu goes incredibly deep it is lifetimes of learning there's no, hey, I'm a second degree black belt. Yeah, I think I'm done. No, it's not <laughs> like that. Uh, um, uh, one of the other things is not that there isn't some good physical conditioning in Tai Chi, especially if you're working, getting low and things like that. But in general, we are not beating the crap out of our bodies like a lot of hard style artists are doing. You know how many people I run into that... Oh, yeah, I used to do martial arts, but I threw my hip out. Now, you know, they're, they're doing kicks and stuff that they probably have no business doing at this point uh, in time. Or they didn't warm up properly or they didn't um, yeah. or they just overdid it um, in an external, like throwing it out there. And, and so now the body didn't respond too well to that. All kinds of things. Sure. Absolutely. Um also, while, you know, I certainly don't intend on getting in any fights, um, I do live in the New York City area, and having self-defense skill um, is important to me. Now, admittedly, Tai Chi, learning to really use it for self-defense is a little longer road than some other ways of doing it, but you have a phenomenal defense method, the clear defense method, that you can learn pretty darn fast and have some serious self-defense skill and it derives from tai chi of course so it really drives an awful lot off of the first move of tai chi and yes. then the frame the body frame of tai chi and using a handful of very high level principles but that when they're exposed like that when they're really taught and transmitted people can pick up pretty fast and then it all happens at the same time all at once, whole body in motion, kind of, you know, Tai Chi principles directly. And it's sort of a simple method, and yet it's very profound in that it, it, it does a lot in terms of what you're able to do for self-defense. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and, and the beauty of it also is it's not a bunch of techniques. I can't no. tell you how many times I've seen, and, and I understand, you know, there's 
good intention, but the, uh, so many schools are offering, hey, come this Saturday for the free women's self-defense course. And they're showing, okay, if somebody punches you, if they grab you, if they do this, if they do this, if they do this, you do this, 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 and this. Yeah, and, learn 50 different things to do that you're not going to remember in the moment that you needed it. Yeah, and if you're not a real martial artist, really working those things month after month, year after year, they're not going to magically come flying out of your yeah, body. They're not going to come out of you. Mostly. No, but what you're teaching is one thing that you do, and it is so powerful. Um, and it will handle multiple attackers as well. So um, getting the self-defense in the way that I've gotten it, in the way that I continue to get it with some higher level stuff that you are also teaching uh, sure. us is phenomenal. Um, and then one of the other things uh, uh, that I have. Harry? Yes. Harry, just let me just interrupt. So I, I presume what you're talking about right here is a hard method. The hard method, yeah. What's called the hard method. Yep. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. um, and then there's just the other thing, uh, which you can have in any uh, activity, really, but is we have a, a great social group here, the, the friends that I make through martial arts, not only locally, but our group here. And when I come to Tennessee and oh, my goodness, and all the your other students and those that are traveling, you know, f uh, to train with us. And it's it's awesome. And I would hate to give that up as well. <laughs> So I think I've touched uh, most of the most of the stuff. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have been really supportive with the stuff I've been going through here here over the last couple of months. So I yeah. Um, anybody Excuse else? Me, I, oh, yeah, if ahead. I may, would just like to add something that has been been touched on some, and and Ty put it most eloquently and succinctly that um, how you relate Tai Chi and its principles to life and work it the opposite way, life with, with Tai Chi principles. And that, that's something I try to stress with working with people and just you practice Tai Chi and apply the principles of basically relaxedness and um, deep breathing, whole body breathing, being in the moment. And you relate that to life and in life, you live the principles and sort of work them back and forth. So you always have these um, principles with you. And it, um, I find that doing that improves my Tai Chi skill levels. And it also improves my uh, life skill levels that, you know, Tai Chi being life sort of and life being Tai Chi. That's I'll just cool. wanted to. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Art. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Anybody else? Anything for last thoughts for today? Okay. Well, um, we'll do more next time. And thanks, 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 guys and the lady. <laughs> we'll do. Uh, glad to be talking to you and sharing and. Yeah, remember folks out there, if you are hearing this and going, okay, I've got to know more about this or I want to see more about it, uh, for Clear Tai Chi, then go to startcleartaichi.com, www.startcleartaichi.com and check it out and uh, let us know, you know, what you think. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good discussion. After this conversation next week. Thank and. You. Get into some other aspects of it and all of that. Um, are, are we? Excuse me. See if we're going to have a discussion next week or no, is that we won't. We won't next week. Yeah, next week for us will be. It won't be until the week after. Okay. Right. Yeah. The. Uh, yep. The. Uh, yeah. Part of the reason that it occurred to me to do this is that a lot of people out there, you know, if they they're casually interested in Tai Chi and different energy arts. And to try to help them to get an idea of what kinds of things are in Tai Chi that, that you might want to know about that would and that would make it interesting and longer term interesting and all those kind of things. And so that's part of where this topic came from. It was a very good discussion, I thought. Yeah. yeah. As always, but especially this one. Cool. Thanks. Mark, was there something you wanted to say? No, no, I was doing Wu Chi while we were doing our stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of wiggling the wiggling the stuff out. But thank you. It was a good discussion.
Uh, all right, guys, lady, more next time. Uh, after I turn off the recording here, if you wanted to stay on and ask anything else, you're welcome. And um, all right. And now a word from our sponsor. For those of you who are interested in internal power and want a reliable place to start, and for anyone who wants to experience internal power for themselves, go to internalpowerguide.com. I built a crash course in hands-on internal power. The practical guide to internal power is a work at your own pace online program. It is the course I use to get students from zero to 60 as quickly as possible. And it is totally free. So sign up at internalpowerguide.com now and get started right away. That's internalpowerguide.com.